Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and as promised today we're going to have a look at R. Now, so far we've measured the radius of the Earth by a variety of different means. We looked at the method of Eratosthenes where we looked at the shadow cast in Alexandria when the sun shone directly down a well in Syene. We looked at Al Biruni where we had the height of a mountain and we measured down to the horizon. And then I've recently demonstrated the radius of the Earth by looking at great circle distances between the cities of Sydney and Perth in Australia. Well, let's look at another way of finding the radius of the Earth today, something completely different. Let's have a look at the distance from the Earth to the Moon. So cue up the music and let's get going. Now, 2300 years ago, a Greek astronomer by the name of Aristarchus of Samos developed a method geometrically to determine the size and distance of the moon and the sun in relationship to the Earth. Now, specifically, he looked at the lunar eclipse, and in a lunar eclipse, the radius of the Earth to the radius of the moon was 3.6. So, in other words, the Earth is 3.6 times the size of the moon. Next, he was able to look at the full moon and look at the angular size of the moon, which is 0 0.513 degrees. And as a result, he was able to relate the diameter of the moon to the distance from the Earth to the moon. If you would like to see the actual mathematics behind all of that, have a look at the two videos. I've linked them in the description. They're a fascinating look at the sophistication of the geometry of the ancient Greeks. But today I would like to go over this second observation. If you look at the angular size of the moon, which is 0 0.513 degrees, and divide that in to 360 degrees, that will be equal to the diameter of the moon over what? The orbit of the moon. Well, what is the orbit of the moon? It's the distance to the moon times 2 pi. So, we can put that right here. If we take 2 pi and move it up to here, we can get the ratio of the diameter of the moon to the distance to the moon. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Now, in 1947, we had something called Project Diana, which was the first attempt by man to bounce radar waves off of the moon, and they were actually able to get an echo return from the moon. And that return indicated the moon was 238,000 miles away. Converting that to more modern measurements, we have 384,400 kilometers as the distance from the Earth to the moon. Now, we don't just rely on Project Diana for this. We bounced other radar waves off of the moon. We bounced lasers off of the lunar surface, and we bounced lasers off of the laser reflectors left by the Apollo astronauts. Currently, we know the distance from the Earth to the moon to a matter of millimeters. And that's it. 384,400 kilometers is the average distance from the Earth to the moon. So here's our rewritten formula. 0 0.513 times 2 pi over 360 equals the diameter of the moon over the distance to the moon. And if you do the math, it's 0 0.009 is the ratio. So if we can figure out the distance from the Earth to the moon and multiply it by 0 0.009, we can come up with the diameter of the moon. Let's go ahead and do that. Here's the distance from the Earth to the moon. We multiply that by 0 0.009 and we come up with a diameter of the moon of 3,460 kilometers. The current accepted value for the diameter of the moon based on more sophisticated measurements is 3,474 kilometers. We're only 14 kilometers off. 
Now recall that the diameter of the Earth is 3.6 times the diameter of the Moon, so let's multiply this by 3.6. We come up with 12,455 kilometers. The currently accepted diameter of the Earth is 12,756 kilometers. And that's not bad considering the diameter is in excess of 12,500 kilometers, being 300 off, really pretty darn close. And remember, the mathematics was developed 2,300 years ago. But is there another measurement that we can take to try and figure out the radius of the Earth? Turns out there is. Now, when describing the orbit of bodies, we look at something called Kepler's third law. And Kepler's third law says that the axis of rotation, or the radius of the orbit, cubed, is proportionate to the time of the orbit squared. Now, for example, the moon's period is approximately 27.3 days, and its orbital distance is 384,400 kilometers. So if we take the radius of the orbit, and cube it, and then we take the period of the orbit in, in minutes, which is 39,312 minutes, and square that. That would equal the period of the International Space Station, which is 93 minutes, times the distance of the ISS cubed. Now, we know these three values. Let's see if we can find the radius of the orbit of the ISS. And remember, that's to the center of the Earth. So we'll move this 93 up to here, and then we'll solve for that. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. So here we go, 384,400 cubed times 93 squared divided by 39,312 squared equals 6,825 cubed, and this will be in kilometers. The ISS orbits 400 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, so we have to subtract that 400, and we get 6425 kilometers as the radius of the Earth. And that comes up to a diameter of the Earth of 12,850 kilometers. We had 12,756 kilometers is the official reading. We're less than 100 kilometers off. So not only do the ancients have it, the folks in the Renaissance have it as well. So now we have five ways of determining the radius of the Earth. We have Eratosthenes, we have Alberuni, we have Great Circles, we have Aristarchus in the distance from the Earth to the Moon, and then we have Kepler, looking at the orbital period of the ISS. When you have five different measurements, looking at five different parameters and data sets, and I'll come back to the same radius of the Earth within one or two percent, we can have a lot of confidence that that's the correct R. So, Nathan, there you go. You say we don't have R? There's five reasons why we do. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thanks again for stopping by. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. And thank you very much to my Patreons, members, and channel subscribers. Keep up the good work, folks. We've got good things coming in the next couple of weeks. Take care, guys. Bye.